To celebrate reaching 5 million subscribers to my YouTube channel, I decided to try building a candy floss or cotton candy machine. And to make it, I'm going to be using this small desk fan, which is powered by a USB plug. And the fan has an on and off switch on the back. I started by undoing the screws on the front grille to take a look inside. Then I removed the screw holding the fan blade on to reveal the motor housing. This is held onto the back plate of the fan with these three screws here. So I undid those two to try and remove the motor. When I lifted it away from the back plate, you can see the wires from the power lead and the switch. I was hoping I'd be able to unplug these items so I could easily remove the motor from the fan's casing, but unfortunately the wires are soldered on, so I cut off the heat shrink to reveal the solder joints, then used my iron to disconnect the components. The motor is now free, I can remove the switch from the back plate and push through the power lead too. To make our candy floss machine, I'm going to fit our motor onto the top of this plastic peppercorn container. I removed the label, then took off the top and used a knife to carefully cut a hole in the middle. This is so I can thread the motor wires through, like this. Next I used a screwdriver to make three small holes, which lined up with the mounting holes on the back of the motor housing. Then I screwed them together using the original screws. And I can now fit the lid back to the container with the motor attached. I do, however, want to cut down the height of this container a bit so it stands a bit lower. I used some masking tape to make a straight line, then cut it with a sharp knife so it's about 7cm long. The lid and the motor still attach perfectly, and the whole thing is now a bit shorter. Next I want to mount the on and off switch in the side like this. I used my soldering iron to make a hole through to the inside, then tidied it up with a knife so I could fit the switch. I also made a hole at the bottom the other side. This'll be for the power cable. I pushed the cable through, threaded one wire out through the switch hole, and slid over some heat shrink. I soldered the switch back on, and fitted the motor, and soldered that together too. And I tidied it up with some heat shrink. If you didn't want to use solder, you could just cut the wires to remove the components from the fan, then refit them using connectors. I can now fit the motor back in, plug in the USB, and make sure it's working. To make our sugar spinner, I'm using a coke can, which I cut in half with a knife and tidied up with scissors, so it looks like this. Then I used a screwdriver to pierce a hole straight through the centre of the base. And next I'm using a needle and a pair of pliers to make a series of holes around the base of the can, like this. I'm holding the needle with the pliers to keep away from the sharp edge. If you prefer, you could use a thumb pin. I'm using this one to make a second line of holes. But if you're going to try this, do be careful not to cut yourself on the sharp edge of the can. When it's done, it should look like this. Next I'm using the original screw from the fan blades to fit the spinner to the motor. Plug it in and give it a test.
and it's not perfectly balanced, but it'll be okay. We need to fit this into a container. You could use a washing up bowl or a large saucepan, but I'm using this trug. And I'm cutting a small hole in the bottom for the power lead. To fix the motor down, I applied some double-sided tape to the bottom and mounted it into the centre of the trug, like this. Then I threaded the cable through the hole, positioned it near a USB socket and I'm switching on the motor so I can start it easily by just plugging in the USB connector and pull the lead out to switch it off. Next we need to make the sugar syrup to pour into our spinner. For this I measured out about one cup of granulated sugar and about half a cup of water, which I poured into this thick-bottomed metal pan. Put it on the heat and bring it to the boil. You'll need to leave it bubbling for a good few minutes until the mixture starts to turn a beautiful light brown caramelly colour. You should notice it's become thicker and a bit syrupy. For the next part, you might want to wear some safety glasses as we slowly pour the mixture into the spinner. And you can see it makes our candy floss instantly. Pretty cool, huh? We get these amazing, very fine sugary strands, almost like cotton wool. If we stop the spinner and have a look, you can see that the centripetal force flings the sugar syrup out through the holes we made into long thin strands. But unfortunately when it cools down, it does solidify, making the spinner unusable. So I unscrewed it and washed it out with some warm water. I decided to use my thumb pin to make even more holes in the spinner, to encourage it to make more candy floss. And I'm also using this small screwdriver to make some of the holes marginally bigger. And I fitted it back to the motor and tried it out with a fresh batch of sugar. And it worked really well, giving us this delicious fluffy candy floss. The spinner has filled up solid with the sugar again. So I gave it another quick wash. And a dry, which really doesn't take long. You could of course make a few different spinners and wash them all together at the end. This time it made a lovely big disc of candy. Pretty cool, huh? which I removed all in one. And added to my stick. It is important for the sugar syrup to be at the right consistency. For this batch I didn't heat it for long enough. You can see it's not even started to brown. And when I poured it into the spinner, it looked like it was working. But it just wasn't solidifying. And we ended up with this sticky sugar residue stuck on the inside of the trug. So it is very important to get the sugar consistency right for it to work properly. I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. 5 million is a colossal amount and I really do appreciate all your support. I'm off to celebrate with some candy floss. Have fun, stay safe and as always, thanks for watching.